Assalamu alaikum dear students. In today's lecture, we are going to study about the dorsal column medial laminar system, one of the very important ascending tract in CNS. You will study it from Guyton, 13th edition, chapter 48. So this is the spinal cord, which you are familiar with, which has gray matter, white matter. White matter are called as, whatever is in the white matter is called as columns. Whatever is in the dorsal, in the gray matter is called as horns and this is the dorsal part. This is the ventral part. Dorsal part is more concerned with the sensory system. Ventral part is more concerned with the motor system. You have the spinal nerves. This is the dorsal root, which is the sensory, and the ventral root, which is the motor. So let's have a look at the dorsal column medial laminar system. The sensations it carries are touch with gradation and intensity, pressure with also gradation and intensity, and localization as well for, for all the sensations. Vibration, two point discrimination, stereognosis, and proprioception. So the receptors are mechanoreceptors. Now, these sensations are they limited or wide range of modalities of sensations? Think about it. Yes, they are limited because they all come under the mechanoreceptor type of sensations. Mechanical type of sensations. The receptors are mechanoreceptors. What about the type of nerve fibers which carry these sensations? If you remember the classification, which carries the uh, touch and pressure was A beta. We have proprioception by A alpha. So A alpha and A beta. Mostly A beta and to some extent also A alpha. So let's have a look at the dorsal column medial meniscal system. Mechanoreceptors go into the spinal cord. The nerves which carry it, which nerves? They are the A beta majority and some A alpha. Enter into the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, we have, before the spinal cord, we have the first order neuron in the dorsal, dorsal root ganglion. And then the fibers, they enter into the spinal cord. When they enter into the spinal cord, they ascend in the dorsal column. Now, lower limb fibers, they ascend medially. And upper limb fibers, they ascend laterally. The medial fibers are called as fasciculus gracilis, and the lateral fibers are called as the fasciculus cuneatus. They ascend in the dorsal column till they reach to the medulla. Now, in the medulla, what happens in the medulla, the gracilis fibers, fasciculus gracilis fibers, they synapse in the nucleus gracile, and the fasciculus cuneatus, they synapse in the nucleus cuneate. And then what happens is there's decussation to the opposite side and then the fibers they ascend in the medial lemoniscus to the thalamus they pass through the bones midbrain to the thalamus in the thalamus the fibers they synapse there is the third order neuron in the ventral lateral nucleus of the thalamus from there fibers pass through the internal capsule to the somatosensory area in the spinal cord Lower limb fibers they lie medially upper limb fibers they lie laterally after the decussation in the medulla what happens is that the lateral fibers become medial and the medial fibers become lateral. And then after the third order neuron, after the thalamus, again, the medial fibers become lateral and the lateral fibers become medial. So the same spatial orientation as the spinal cord. So again, in the cortex, the lower limb fibers, they lie medially and the upper limb fibers, they lie laterally. So this is the dorsal column medial laminar system. You can have, have a look at it, lower limb, upper limb, first order neuron, second order neuron in the medulla, decussation, fibers that change orientation, thalamus, and then again fibers that change their orientation. So this is the summary of what we have talked about. Somatosensory area is present just posterior to the central sulcus. It's the post-central gyrus. This is somatosensory area one, this is two. Fibers after going to the somatosensory area, they always go to the somatosensory association area. It's a little bit here up there. Each side of the cortex receives the signals from the opposite side of the body. Why is it so? Yes, because there is decussation at the level of medulla. You need to remember this. Spatial orientation of the dorsal column medial meniscal system. We have talked about it at the level of the dorsal column in the spinal cord. The lower limb fibers, they lie medially. The upper limb fibers, they lie laterally. After decussation at the medulla level and in the thalamus, the medial fibers become lateral and the lateral fibers become medial. At the somatosensory area, the lower limb, again, they become medial and the upper limb become lateral. So you can see this is the final destination, the somatosensory area. Of course, not really the final. It goes then to the somatosensory association area. 
Swatter sensory area is extremely important for localization. You can see that each part of the body is represented as a specific part. So this is the lower limb, medially, and the upper limb. Some areas are represented by large areas in the somatic cortex. For example, lips, face, thumb, represented by large areas in the somatosensory area as compared to the trunk, lower part of the body. What's the reason for that? Because of the number of receptors. The highest representation in the somatosensory area is of the lips, then face, then thumb. Why? Because the highest number of receptors are in the lips and then face and then thumb. Have a look at this diagram. Have a look at this diagram. You can see that you have the upper and lower limb medially and the upper limb laterally. You can see the lips having the highest representation. So these are the things you need to remember about the dorsal column, medial and skull system, type of sensations. We have talked about it. Receptors, sensory fibers, the first order, second order, third order neuron, diffusion and destination, because you need to compare it with the anterolateral spinal pelvic tract. If you have any, any questions, we will discuss in the lecture.